The language of mathematics has a vast vocabulary of specialist and technical terms. It also has a certain amount of jargon, commonly used phrases which are part of the culture of mathematics, rather than of the subject. Jargon often appears in lectures, and sometimes in print, as informal shorthand for rigorous arguments or precise ideas. Much of this is common English, but with a specific non-obvious meaning when used in a mathematical sense. Some phrases, like, in general, appear below in more than one section. Philosophy of mathematics. Abstract nonsense Also general abstract nonsense or generalized abstract nonsense, a tongue-in-cheek reference to category theory, using which one can employ arguments that establish a result without reference to any specifics of the present problem. The paper of Ellenberg and MacLean introduced the very abstract idea of a category, a subject then called general abstract nonsense. Saunders MacLean, Grothendieck, raised algebraic geometry to a new level of abstraction, if certain mathematicians could console themselves for a time with the hope that all these complicated structures were abstract nonsense. The later papers of Grothendieck and others showed that classical problems, which had resisted efforts of several generations of talented mathematicians, could be solved in terms of complicated concepts. Michael Monastersky canonical a reference to a standard or choice-free presentation of some mathematical object. The term canonical is also used more informally, meaning roughly, standard, or classic. For example, one might say that Euclid's proofs is the canonical proof of the infinitude of primes. There are two canonical proofs that are always used to show non-mathematicians what a mathematical proof is like. The proof that there are infinitely many prime numbers. The proof of the irrationality of the square root of 2. Frequidike deep a result is called deep if its proof requires concepts and methods that are advanced beyond the concepts needed to formulate the result. The prime number theorem, proved with techniques from complex analysis, was thought to be a deep result until elementary proofs were found. The fact that pi is irrational is a deep result because it requires considerable development of real analysis to prove, even though it can be stated in terms of simple number theory and geometry. Elegant also beautiful, an aesthetic term referring to the ability of an idea to provide insight into mathematics. Whether by unifying disparate fields, introducing a new perspective on a single field, or providing a technique of proof which is either particularly simple, or captures the intuition or imagination as to why the result it proves is true. Giancarlo wrote a distinguished between elegance of presentation and beauty of concept, saying that for example, some topics could be written about elegantly, although the mathematical content is not beautiful, and some theorems or proofs are beautiful but may be written about inelegantly. The beauty of a mathematical theory is independent of the aesthetic qualities of the theory's rigorous expositions. Some beautiful theories may never be given a presentation which matches their beauty. Instances can also be found of mediocre theories of questionable beauty which are given brilliant. Exciting expositions, category theory, is rich in beautiful and insightful definitions and poor in elegant proofs. The theorems remain clumsy and dull. Expositions of projective geometry vied for one another in elegance of presentation and in cleverness of proof. In retrospect, one wonders what all the fuss was about. Mathematicians may say that a theorem is beautiful when they really mean to say that it is enlightening. We acknowledge a theorem's beauty when we see how the theorem fits in its place. We say that a proof is beautiful when such a proof finally gives away the secret of the theorem. Giancarlo wrote a elementary a proof or result is called elementary if it requires only basic concepts and methods, in contrast to so-called deep results. The concept of elementary proof is used specifically in number theory where it usually refers to a proof that does not use methods from complex analysis. 
Folklore A result is called folklore if it is non-obvious, has not been published, and yet is generally known among the specialists in a field. Usually, it is unknown who first obtained the result. If the result is important, it may eventually find its way into the textbooks, whereupon it ceases to be folklore. Many of the results mentioned in this paper should be considered folklore, in that they merely formally state ideas that are well known to researchers in the area, but may not be obvious to beginners and to the best of my knowledge do not appear elsewhere in print. Russell Impagliazzo natural similar to, canonical, but more specific. This term makes reference to a description which holds independently of any choices. Though long used informally, this term has found a formal definition in category theory. Pathological an object behaves pathologically if it fails to conform to the generic behavior of such objects, fails to satisfy certain regularity properties, or simply disobeys mathematical intuition. These can be and often are contradictory requirements. Sometimes the term is more pointed, referring to an object which is specifically and artificially exhibited as a counterexample to these properties. Since half a century we have seen arise a crowd of bizarre functions which seem to try to resemble as little as possible the honest functions which serve some purpose, nay more. From the logical point of view, it is these strange functions which are the most general, today they are invented expressly to put at fault the reasonings of our fathers. Henry Poincaré, the Dirichlet function, took on an enormous importance, as giving an incentive for the creation of new types of function whose properties departed completely from what intuitively seemed admissible. A celebrated example of such a so-called pathological function is the one provided by Weir's Trass. This function is continuous but not differentiable. J. Sousa Pinto note for that latter quote that as the differentiable functions are meager in the space of continuous functions. As Banach found out in 1931, differentiable functions are colloquially speaking a rare exception among the continuous ones. Thus it can hardly be defended anymore to call non-differentiable continuous functions pathological. Rigor mathematics strives to establish its results using indisputable logic rather than informal descriptive argument. Rigor is the use of such logic in a proof. Well-behaved an object is well-behaved if it does satisfy the prevailing regularity properties, or sometimes if it conforms to intuition. Descriptive informalities Although ultimately every mathematical argument must meet a high standard of precision, mathematicians use descriptive but informal statements to discuss recurring themes or concepts with unwieldy formal statements. Note that many of the terms are completely rigorous in context. Almost all a shorthand term for all except for a set of measure zero, when there is a measure to speak of, for example. Almost all real numbers are transcendental, because the algebraic real numbers form a countable subset of the real numbers with measure zero. One can also speak of almost all integers having a property to mean all but finitely many. Despite the integers not admitting a measure for which this agrees with the previous usage, for example, almost all prime numbers are odd. There is a more complicated meaning for integers as well, discussed in the main article. Finally, this term is sometimes used synonymously with generic, below, arbitrarily large notions which arise mostly in the context of limits, referring to the recurrence of a phenomenon as the limit is approached. A statement such as that predicate P is satisfied by arbitrarily large values, can be expressed in more formal notation by X, Y, X, P, C also frequently. The statement that quantity F depending on X, can be made, arbitrarily large, corresponds to Y, X, F, Y, arbitrary a shorthand for the universal quantifier. An arbitrary choice is one which is made unrestrictedly, or alternatively. A statement holds of an arbitrary element of a set if it holds of any element of that set. Also much in general language use among mathematicians. Of course, this problem can be arbitrarily complicated, eventually, definitely in the context of limits. 
This is shorthand for sufficiently large arguments, the relevant argument to implicit in the context. As an example, one could say that the function log eventually becomes larger than 100 in this context. Eventually means for sufficiently large x. Factor through a term in category theory referring to composition of morphisms. If we have three objects A, B, and C and a map which is written as a composition with them, then F is said to factor through any of and finite next to the usual meaning of not infinite, in another more restrictive meaning that one may encounter. A value being said to be finite also excludes infinitesimal values and the value zero. For example, if the variance of a random variable is said to be finite, this implies it is a positive real number. Frequently in the context of limits, this is shorthand for arbitrarily large arguments and its relatives, as would eventually. The intended variant is implicit. As an example, one could say that the function sin is frequently zero, where frequently means for arbitrarily large x. Generic this term has similar connotations as almost all but is used particularly for concepts outside the purview of measure theory. A property holds, generically, on a set if the set satisfies some notion of density, or perhaps if its complement satisfies some notion of smallness. For example, a property which holds on a dense G delta is said to hold generically. In algebraic geometry, one says that a property of points on an algebraic variety that holds on a dense Zariski open set is true generically, however, it is usually not said that a property which holds merely on a dense set is generic in this situation. In general in a descriptive context, this phrase introduces a simple characterization of a broad class of objects with an eye towards identifying a unifying principle. This term introduces an elegant description which holds for arbitrary objects. Exceptions to this description may be mentioned explicitly as pathological cases. Norbert Acampo of the University of Basel once asked Groth and Eek about something related to the platonic solids. Groth and Eek advised caution. The platonic solids are so beautiful and so exceptional, he said, that one cannot assume such exceptional beauty will hold in more general situations. Alan Jackson left-hand side, right-hand side most often, these refer simply to the left-hand or the right-hand side of an equation, for example, has x on the LHS and y plus 1 on the RHS. Occasionally, these are used in the sense of L value and R value. An RHS is primitive, and an LHS is derivative. Nice a mathematical object is colloquially called nice or sufficiently nice if it satisfies hypotheses or properties, sometimes unspecified or even unknown, that are especially desirable in a given context. It is an informal antonym for pathological. For example, one might conjecture that a differential operator ought to satisfy a certain boundedness condition for nice test functions, or one might state that some interesting topological invariant should be computable for nice spaces x onto a function is called or onto b only if it is surjective. It may even be said that f is onto not translatable to languages other than English. Proper if, for some notion of substructure, objects are substructures of themselves, then the qualification proper requires the objects to be different. For example, a proper subset of a set S is a subset of S that is different from S, and a proper divisor of a number N is a divisor of N that is different from N. This overloaded word is also non-jargon for a proper morphism. Regular A function is called regular if it satisfies satisfactory continuity and differentiability properties, which are often context-dependent. These properties might include possessing a specified number of derivatives, with the function and its derivatives exhibiting some nice property, such as holder continuity. Informally, this term is sometimes used synonymously with smooth below. These imprecise uses of the word regular are not to be confused with the notion of a regular topological space, which is rigorously defined. Resp. A convention to shorten parallel expositions.
has some relationship to x means that a has some relationship to x and also that b has relationship to y. For example, squares have four sides, or compact spaces are ones where every open cover has a finite open subcover. Sharp often, a mathematical theorem will establish constraints on the behavior of some object, for example, a function will be shown to have an upper or lower bound. The constraint is sharp if it cannot be made more restrictive without failing in some cases. For example, for arbitrary non-negative real numbers x, the exponential function x, where e equals 2.7182818, gives an upper bound on the values of the quadratic function x2. This is not sharp, the gap between the functions is everywhere at least 1. Among the exponential functions of the form alpha x, setting alpha equals e2, e equals 2.087065 results in a sharp upper bound. The slightly smaller choice alpha equals 2 fails to produce an upper bound. Since then alpha 3 equals 8 less than 32. In applied fields the word tight is often used with the same meaning. Smooth smoothness is a concept which mathematics has endowed with many meanings. From simple differentiability to infinite differentiability to analyticity, and still others which are more complicated. Each such usage attempts to invoke the physically intuitive notion of smoothness. Strong, strong Gray theorem is said to be strong if it deduces restrictive results from general hypotheses. One celebrated example is Donaldson's theorem, which puts tight restraints on what would otherwise appear to be a large class of manifolds. This usage reflects the opinion of the mathematical community. Not only should such a theorem be strong in the descriptive sense but it should also be definitive in its area. A theorem, result, or condition is further called stronger than another one if a proof of the second can be easily obtained from the first but not conversely. An example is the sequence of theorems. Fermat's little theorem, Euler's theorem, Lagrange's theorem, each of which is stronger than the last. Another is that a sharp upper bound is a stronger result than a non-sharp one. Finally, the adjective strong or the adverb strongly may be added to a mathematical notion to indicate a related stronger notion. For example, a strong antichain is an antichain satisfying certain additional conditions. And likewise a strongly regular graph is a regular graph meeting stronger conditions. When used in this way, the stronger notion is a technical term with a precisely defined meaning. The nature of the extra conditions cannot be derived from the definition of the weaker notion. Sufficiently large, suitably small, sufficiently close in the context of limits. These terms refer to some point at which a phenomenon prevails as the limit is approached. A statement such as that predicate P holds for sufficiently large values, can be expressed in more formal notation by X, Y X, P, C also eventually, upstairs, downstairs a descriptive term referring to notation in which two objects are written one above the other, the upper one is upstairs and the lower, downstairs. For example, in a fiber bundle, the total space is often said to be upstairs, with the base space downstairs. In a fraction, the numerator is occasionally referred to as upstairs and the denominator downstairs, as in, bringing a term upstairs, up to, modulo, mod out by an extension to mathematical discourse of the notions of modular arithmetic. A statement is true up to a condition if the establishment of that condition is the only impediment to the truth of the statement. Also used when working with members of equivalence classes, especially in category theory, where the equivalence relation is isomorphism. For example, the tensor product in a weak monoidal category is associative and unital up to a natural isomorphism, vanish to assume the value zero. For example, the function sin vanishes for those values of x that are integer multiples of pi. This can also apply to limits. C vanish at infinity. Weak, weaker the converse of strong, well-defined accurately and precisely described or specified.